Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. I had been asked if I would share my book haul from a week or so ago. This is only a small sampling of it, but I was so excited about it that the day I got them, I didn't even really pay attention to what I was putting in that bag. So you're seeing me open those up and go through them for the first time. So I was so excited. I couldn't wait to get to making something with them. So I took six of the smaller um, volumes and decided to make a paper pack. So I've been working on that and today I wanted to do a little test of my paper pack to see if I liked how the layout and actually make something with it to see how it worked out. So I'm not finished with the make yet, but I do want to give you a little tease. So the first 11 minutes, as soon as I finish this introduction, will be me unpacking those books and then stick around at the end and I will show you how I made this cute little cover out of my um, kit. So I'm gonna do, I'm finishing working on my kit. I have all of the book covers done and they're all gonna be done in this way. This one I printed on fabric so that I could use it that way. I could also print it on paper if I wanted, but I wanted to give you a little tease of that. I'm gonna we'd be working with this one today. And then for each book, each of the six books, I'm also gonna do a second sheet that uh, will have things that you can cut apart and use in your journaling. So these are the two sheets that I'm gonna use at the end of this video. I'll show you how I made my cover. I'll do another video later where I finish this up. And I also want to construct it a second way. Um, this is with a hard spine and I wanna try um, doing it again with a soft spine, a floating spine. So we'll see how that goes, but stick around. I hope you like it. If you do, give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so that you don't miss out because I will be doing um, a follow-up to this and then also introducing the, the paper pack, hopefully very soon. So sit back and enjoy. Hello and welcome. This is Sherry with Heart and Soul in the studio today. So I, I went into town today. I never do that. I had a lunch date and she called or texted and said that she was running really late if I could meet her later. So I had a lot of time to kill. I couldn't go back home, it was too far. So I just went to some thrift stores and one of the stores um, that I found there wasn't a thrift store, but it's kind of a store like um, what I used to do when I refinished furniture and all that kind of stuff. That's mostly what they do is paint old furniture to make it look new and they can sign things and that sort of deal but they had all these old books kind of around just kind of for display. And so I asked them if they sold them. And she said, well, you know, I think they should be marked if they're not, you know, they're all, you know, $5 or a dollar, you know, $5 or less. And if you buy a bunch, we'll just give you a deal. So we went around the store collecting just any of these old books that I thought would appeal to me. And I, I have to show you the bag of books that I found. I did go to a couple of other um, thrift stores and found a couple of things that I'll show you too, but this was my, I was just so excited. So this one's called the Hoosier book and it's all like these poems and they're all kind of in, they're in English, but they're kind of in a dialect. So I, I want to kind of read through some of these and see, but this is copyrighted in, um, the most recent one was 1916 and all it goes back to 1887, I think it was, but there's, um, there's even some a handwriting here in this beautiful front page paper. So I have things I can scan, I think. And then um, this one was also really cute. And this one I love. This one has um, writing in it, 1914. And then it's got um, just, it's copyrighted 1905. And then just the text in here is beautiful. So it's um, a book for college students um, learning German. And just look at the Look at the text. I just went nuts. I can't even believe that. So it, part of it's in English, you know, because it's kind of a study book for learning German. So I thought that was great. And then let's see what else I have. I don't even know what I bought. I mean, I just kind of grabbed anything that looked really old. I don't even know what these are and how many. I got all these for $5. I thought that was good. Romeo and Juliet. So these are just different literature books, I think, for... Oh, antique books, a little thing. Oh, and look at the writing all over the inside. I didn't even look at these. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just beside myself. Let's see how old this one is. Copyright 
copyright 1895. Oh my gosh. So this is just all kinds of poetry. 1913. Okay, win-win. I love these. Okay, I'll have to look through them later. What else do I have? See this little one? Kidnapped. Robert this. Oh, that's nice. It's got a little a little bookshop stamp and some more handwriting. I love the pages are all yellowed. I just kind of like look at the print text of that. That's just great. Let's see. Memoirs of the Adventures of David Balfour in the year 1751. And it's missing its copyright page. But it's looking old to me. I'll have to see what I can what I can find online about when it was. Okay, I'll look at that one. Look up that one. And then this. Oh, I loved these. Okay. So my husband's name is Ray, and look at these. Oh my gosh, look at these. I just love these covers. Ray's Arithmetic Third Book. Ray's Practical Arithmetic. And my husband's name is Ray. I can't wait to show them, but look how old these are. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe it. See, I'm thinking her husband collected all these things and then just brought them in the store, but look at the Look at the writing on that one. And some little stamp. Where's the date? 1881, oh my gosh. Look at that. I can't even believe, I need to go into town more often. I can't even believe that I found this and this was not in an antique store. Look at that, where on that, oh my gosh. And what do we have here? A page must have come out. I, look how old that is. Oh my gosh. Okay. And this one again, 18, 1877. Wow. And I just love it. Look, it's a math book. I mean, that's just great. I'm going to be able to scan some of these and make them larger. Okay. And then look at this little baby. Look how cute that is. Oh, this is a Bible. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, no, see, I can't tear up a Bible, but maybe I can scan something just to scan the pages. How pretty is that? 1886. Wow. And it was... Published in 1881. Oh, see, I think I'll just have to keep this, keep this like it is. It's just so cute. Okay. Score. And just a couple more. The Complete Garden. Oh, I got this one. Oh, no, this one was at that same store because they're all in the same bag. But I just kind of love that. That's a nice size book. Uh, 35, at least that's when the owner had it here. Copyright 1921. And these are nice, bigger, you know, larger size pages. That's one thing about the books that I do have because I wasn't looking at them for this, you know, kind of thing, is most of mine are smaller books, so they don't have large pages, you know, and these, this has nice big pages. So that's that one. And then this is newer. This is newer, but I like, I can't even get it in here in the total screen, but I like how big that is. It's like, how big is this? Almost 14, it's like 12 inches, almost 14, yeah, 12, about 12 inches, so that's good. And I like its nice big text, 
So these will be fun to even do um, like artwork on, you know, print it onto these pages because I'll be able to um, trim this to printer size paper and run it through my printer, I think. So that'll be fun. And then this one, I got this at a thrift store for $2. And I love even the cover of it. It's, it has some damage, but I'm gonna do something, I think. But this is um, Messages and Papers of the Presidents, Volume 2. But it starts with um, it has a nice inside paper. And this is copyright 1897. So it's old and it starts with, you know, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson. Um, but it just has presidential papers and things in it. So that'll be fun to kind of just even look through. So I don't know what I'll do with that, but it was old and I liked it. And then I have this big one too, which is great. This one is also, this one is like 14 inches. No, this one is 12 and a half, 12 and a half inches this way. So that's another great one. And it's just a big ginormous dictionary. So dictionary pages are always good, and I don't have one this big. So this will be fun, too. And let's see. don't know what. Let's see. A date on this one. Yeah, see, this one's newer. Oh, look, a calendar. So 1967, 1966. So... Anyway, I just thought that was so much fun. And then I did get one other book that it's it's newer, but I just like the cover. It's kind of like a pink suede fabric and it's, it's kind of squishy. So I'm thinking it might be a nice size for another um, slow stitch book. I already have a cover for the one that I started and I think I can't switch and use this when I think my pages are too big, um, but this might be a fun one for future. And I really like, the print that they did on this, that'll look really cute to um, even age some of this paper and use too. So that was my haul for today. I'm just so excited about these old ones, I can't even tell you. Oh, and I found this little piece of um, trim that I can tea dye. So I think this was like, I think this was $2. And all those old books, $22. I mean, I can't even, I can't even get over it. So I'm happy, that was a good lunch today to find all of this. So I am excited to go start making some. Okay, I'm back and I've cut out, I made two pages. Um, my plan is to make two pages for each book so that there is one that will have the cover and then another page that will just be kind of a collage of little things that you can cut out. So I'm gonna work on the little Bible one and I printed out the cover onto fabric and all of them, I backed the, well, I I set the book in its original size onto uh, an eight and a half by 11 sheet that you can print out. But I put some pages from the actual book as the background. So that way there will be, if you want to actually make a book cover, you will have enough fabric to kind of wrap around um, to make the inside of your book. So I went ahead and started and I cut out a piece of just recycled cardboard and that's going to be my base and what I did was I just measured you know roughly the size um, because these are old books they may, might not be perfectly squared and all that but um, when I when I made them I tried to kind of make them squared up so I've cut my cardboard um, this one ended up for the Bible it ended up being um, eight and a half by five and five eighths this way. So I'm going to just put that on there. I flipped it over and so that I can kind of see exactly where I just kind of did a test, you know, dry run to see if it was actually going to fit. And you'll see the words here, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to use some uh, distressing vintage photo and kind of rough, rough that up. 
So it's going to fit. I kind of just did a dry run. You could just cut this off and have the edges frayed and glue it straight down and not have it wrap around. But I thought I would make an attempt to do a wrap around one just to see, and I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, this is really me kind of testing out my kit just to make sure I like the sizes that I made everything. So that's going to fit. I went ahead and drew lines on the back side just so I can kind of um, get it laid out exactly where I want it. You could use Mod Podge. That's what I was going to use. But I have this um, quick glue from the lamp shop when I made lampshades, and it's for dissimilar surfaces. So it really works well with attaching fabric to things. So I think I'm just going to use this because I've been trying to use this up. So I'm going to get a little brush here. And I'm just going to squirt it right on to this dries really quick. I'll put a link to this because you can buy this on Amazon. So I'm just going to spread this out. And like I said, it dries fast, which is kind of handy. And I didn't do Nola's idea of putting the saran wrap down. I will never learn. And the other thing that I forgot to do is I didn't rough this up, which I should have done. So if it doesn't stick, I'm going to end up having to rough it up and do it over. So we'll see. So I think um, it's not going to show through this print. If you're worried about that, I would prime this first or use the other side. Um, but we're going to see if I can get this laid down square, somewhat square. Okay, so I didn't follow my own rules as far as roughing up my surface. So we'll say a prayer that this works. So just let that stick down for a second while I clean off my mat. Okay, now I have my saran wrap out. And I have my cover. You might want to use a credit card or something to make sure there are no bubbles. Okay, and then I'm gonna just glue this. I think I got it pretty squared on there, that's good. I'm just gonna glue this up and around here. Um, I'll cut my corners kind of back because I want, I want some corner in there. Actually, maybe I'll See how that could work. I rounded my corners just because I thought it made them look more worn. So I think I'm gonna trim some of this off. Maybe approach it like I do an upholstery sort of thing. Which means I wanna do my corners first, but I'm gonna trim some of this back. Okay, so sort of like upholstery, I'm going to put a little glue there and get my corners first, I think. And then I can trim more of that away. So I'm gonna, just going to put a little clip. Can you see how I... I didn't want it exactly like a pleat. I wanted it kind of an old book where there's like less fabric in each of those little pleats. Um, I could have done it like, see, like this. Maybe that's even better. Maybe that's even better. Maybe I'll undo this. This is me winging it because I've never done a cover like this before. And I could leave that. I'm going to end up covering this. So I could leave that um, and not even trim it. So I think that's fine to do that. Or you could have less. 
Then I would have a, maybe I'll trim it, then I'll have a little strip to use for a ribbon or something. Okay, so better idea to tear those beforehand and then just do it like a package. I think that's gonna work the best. Okay, there's my cover. I didn't, um, I didn't have to trim that off, but I thought why waste it having it be buried inside? Now I'll have some little scraps to use in my slow stitching or ribbons or something. So I don't need that anymore. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I think, is just go ahead and make my um, my score marks for where I want my folds to be. And I should maybe measure those to see if they're even because like I said, this was an old book. So I don't really know if they actually even are the same. So let's see. So about three and what is that quarter? Three and three eighths maybe on that. Let's see if I can get three and three eighths. Would be kind of there. Three and three eighths. Okay, I think I'm gonna do three and three eighths from both sides and let's just see how that looks. So, get turned around the right way. Three and a quarter, three eighths. Now, it might have been better to actually, you know, cut this cardboard and have a gap there. But I think this will be fine. Okay, and then same from the other side. Three and three eighths. And for this, I just use my little Recollections um, scoring cutting tool because it's easy for something this thick. There is my little book cover. How cute. How cute is that? And I thought of other ways of doing this, you know, cutting it apart. Maybe I don't want the spine that thick. You know, and then just having it be like a little skinny flat notebook. But I just think that's so cute. You know, it's the same size as the actual um, should be anyway. Where's the book? You know, my little book. You could even, this is kind of fraying. You could even have not glued all that down, you know, tear it wherever there is a little break um, and really make it look authentic. But I'm gonna leave it like that. And then the inside I have done on my, on my sheet. I did um, the front because I just thought it was, it showed what year it was printed. And this had um, the who who the Bible was given to in 1886, and then in the back it had this is who it was from, and I had some space left on here, so I just wanted to do some little embellishments. So these are just little isolated areas from the cover designs that I just added to um, 
and then those can be added to like little cards or something. So I went ahead and I printed out um, the same pages that were, uh, this was kind of the center of the Bible. So I printed those out and I actually can trim these down a little bit. I'm gonna make my corners. And I had used my um, We Are Memory Keepers and I used the middle size one, the seven millimeter. So I'll do that the same here. just on those outside corners. And that could be my liner paper. I don't know what you call that, but I know there's a name and somebody's told me before, but I just don't remember um, my inside paper. So I can just glue that down there and cover that. And I, I don't need it to be that big. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and glue it down and then just let that be where the fold is. And then that way it kind of will hide my signatures um, when I put those in there too. So I think I'll just, maybe with some art glitter glue, maybe I'll age those first. Let me get my vintage photo. And dirty all this up really well because, you know, it's from the 1800s. So it needs to be really old and dirty looking. I mean, I just love old books. I keep thinking one day I'm going to sit down and read them, you know, but just the way they talk and write and everything is so different. But And I like really, I like period movies. So I'm thinking I could really get into it if I just let myself get lost in it one day. But I have so many old books now. Um, I really should do that. But I don't, I don't take the time to read too much because I'm busy doing all this creative stuff. So, stuff. But that's what I love doing. I can't help myself. I used to read a lot. And now when I read, it's about, you know, how to, how to make things. So I'm going to just dirty this up really well with my vintage photo. And I want to get these edges too. And then my pages. I'm thinking this would be a really cute gift for my mom has, um, my mom has her two lady friends that she does her Bible st weekly Bible study with and then they go to lunch and I just love that they do that because you know they um it just gives them a good time together and it it gets them out you know to do something once a week so I'm thinking um that this would be really a cute like a gratitude journal you know or a little prayer journal or something and um so I might have to make a couple more of these so that I can give them to the three the three ladies next time I go visit. I think they would like that. Okay, I'm gonna glue those in. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna use that glue. It's a little bit wet, I think, even though it dries really well. I think I'll just use this. This is my art glitter glue. Super cute. I love that. Guess I have saran wrap. I don't need to clean that up. Okay, that's my cover. Let those dry. I need to put them under books, I think, before I make that score fold there so that it's all stuck down really good. So I'm gonna put that under a book for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back with my cover. I let it sit under some books for uh, just a few minutes till the glue could uh, dry here. And so I'm all ready to go. I think for the next step, I need to get some papers together. I think I just wanna leave this a totally blank journal. I think I'm gonna make at least three of them so that I can give them as gifts. And so the next one, I'll do my pages. 
I, I don't even know how many signatures it's going to have or what I'm going to do with it. I'll maybe do a tiny bit of decorating. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and so I'll do a second video putting that together. Uh, but I want to go get working on finishing up my uh, my kit that I'll put in my Etsy shop. So far I have these two. There will be six designs total um, and two pages for each book. So a total of 12 pages. So uh, anyway, hope, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.